Okay, before I get started, I should note that this is about all the actual motorcycle riding footage that there'll be in this video. My 2018 video, linked in the description, has quite a bit. You can check that out by clicking down below there. Or, you know, a lot of other people have done video of the actual roads and drives that I'm on. I'll show you great views where I stop, where I camp, and tell you what it's like to be out here in the desert. All right, let's get out there. Well, there it is. And here we are, almost to Sonora Pass. Smoky out there. That's all smoke. Not a lot of water, but some. And I made it over Sonora Pass. And the bike's behind the tree, and you can see the curvy, twisty, steep road. The smoke's a little less over here. Once we got up onto the mountain, it was a little less. There's still smoke out there. Smoke everywhere in California right now. But in the beautiful forest, soon desert. Super smoky. Bishop is out there somewhere. Wow. Smoky view of Little Cowhorn Valley out there, Death Valley Road heading out towards Death Valley, Eureka Valley actually at the moment, and here we are in the shade hanging out, just had my sandwich from Schatz, nice and cool up here, probably 95, I got all my ice and stuff, soon I'll get back on the road, head down into Eureka Valley and on into Death Valley. Eureka dunes are out there somewhere, I can sort of just barely see them, really smoky. I'm headed more uh, that way across. Not sure where. Yeah, you see a little bit out there. Uh, it's hot down here. It's got to be 105 or so. But I just got to get across and then up, and I'll sit up there where it's windy for a while. Made it across Eureka Valley to this little shady spot. I'll hang out here for a while. It's about 3:30 in the afternoon. For how long it'll take me to get over these mountains? I should hang out here half an hour or so, that way it'll be cooling down when I'm coming down into the into actual Death Valley. It was definitely hitting around 110 in the middle of the valley out there, but the good thing was I knew the road had been graded not that long ago. It was in really good shape, so I was able to get across really fast. 20, 25 miles an hour the whole way. About 4.15 p.m. Yeah, it's cooling off a little bit. Nice breeze going. Probably time to ride again. Smoky out there, but nice and windy up here. Oh, it's cool. It's perfect. I don't know what temperature. Well, the thermometer's down to 99. It feels a lot cooler in the wind anyway. There's a cloud over the sun. Perfect. Oh, I love it out here. Well, 10 or 15 more slow miles. I won't make it to camp till dark, so I'll see you in the morning. Sun is just coming up behind me. A little bit of a mess, but there's camp here at Mesquite Springs Campground. Nobody but me. Our overnight low was 84 degrees. It's still 84 now and it's about to start warming up again. Still not bad. Nice little breeze going. Lots of jackrabbits. When I pulled in last night, there was one right in the driveway at the front of the campground and then there were like seven more. They were all over the place. Right at the front entrance of the campground. It's pretty funny. This one's just kind of looking around, browsing in the plants. Almost 9 o'clock, it's about time to get moving again. Almost 100 degrees already, not even 10 a.m. A couple cars out here, probably people going to Ubi Hubi Crater and back. Yeah, we're back here at Stovepipe Wells, right around sea level. 
probably about 110 degrees. Had a nice lunch and a little dip in the pool. They're nice, they let me in the pool even though they're vacuuming it out. Cooled off, uh, it's almost one o'clock. Gonna head out. A little after 1 p.m. it's hitting 120 on the big thermometer here at Furnace Creek. We're at 190 feet below sea level at the visitor center. It's closed, but the uh, bookstore and the restrooms are open and there's water. But I'm just gonna hang out for a little bit, grab some ice next door at the general store, and head out of Death Valley to where it's just slightly cooler. All loaded up with ice, having a nice froze fruit here in the misters. Oh, it's 120, but it is shady and wet down here, so it's not too bad. Next up, ride out. Just after 3 p.m., drop from 113 to 112 over here at Shoshone. 60 miles that way to Baker, and I'll go into Mojave Preserve and find some place to stay for the night. I'm just kind of letting it cool off a little. There's a nice breeze, and this is a long, hot ride ahead of me, so I'm going to take a break here for a while. And then I'll stop on Ibex Pass, catch the wind there before going the, the last 30 miles. It's just all about surviving this heat, really. I love the hot weather, but I found out the hard way some years ago that once it's over 110, you gotta be careful out here. When it's this hot, the engine heat from the bike has nowhere to go and comes right up at me. So that plus the hot wind means I have to stop every once in a while. So I try to stop on passes where it's windy and cooler. And you gotta wipe down with water and make sure you get some more ice. It's not too bad as long as you're ready for it. Anyway, nice little pass, nice breeze up here. Ivex Pass, I thought that sign is pretty funny. Really, you can't transport illegal fireworks? Well, I guess this is a route for people to bring fireworks from Nevada into California. Just before 4th of July, we got caught up in a police roadblock looking for fireworks right along here. So, there, yeah, they're out here looking. About 30 miles out that way to Baker. Had some brief cloud cover, so I stopped to take a photo of the dunes. Here, I'll show you. That's where we're at. And it is hot. It's got to be over 110 in this little lowland. Death Valley is that way. That's the exit route from Death Valley, so all that hot air is coming right down there. Oh boy, here we go. That was brutal. South of Ibex Pass, it's just all flat, wide open basin. It is so hot out there. Good thing I was ready for it. Yeah, unprepared, this ride will make you very sick, very fast. That's why I drank lots of water, had lots of ice, and had the good swim in the pool, so my body core temperature was nice and cool. I stay behind the tinted visor in my full face mask, so it's not quite as bad as having the um, hair dryer right in your face, but the whole rest of your body is just getting beaten by super hot air the whole ride. So definitely something to think about if you want to come out here in the summer. It is brutal. You have to be adapted to it. Ten miles to ice and Baker. Can you see the mirage out there, center screen? Kind of funny because Baker and ice cold drinks are just on the other side of it. Well, the pavement is just out there. Uh, the Mojave Road comes through here, and here's a nice roadside camp. Knew I could find one. I don't have any shade, but it's almost sunset. It's, and I got enough shade from the motorcycle. I got a little camp chair I can sit in there. And this is where I'm at. Really nice. It was 114 in Baker. Now I'm up at about 3,000 feet. It feels like 100, maybe even less. Nice breeze, much, much cooler. When I was getting food and supplies in Baker, I could see a huge traffic jam on the 15 freeway. Sunday night, Vegas to LA traffic is always terrible. I usually camp about 10 miles north of here, right along the pavement. But on a Sunday night, traffic coming through the park that'll just keep you up all night. At least here, I'm a few hundred yards from the pavement, and it won't matter. Tonight, it'll turn out that traffic jam was temporary, and the traffic will lighten up, because we're still in COVID crisis here. There's not that many cars out there. It'll be a quiet night in the park. Well, that sure helps. A lot of these clouds are forming out of smoke. I guess there were some showers around here all over the place, really. Death Valley looked like it had been sprinkled on. And you may have heard about the monsoons. The SEMA dome fire is, I don't know, 30 miles out that way. Uh, it's mostly contained, which means it's already mostly burned out. But yeah, it was bad. Put a lot of the smoke is in the air is from that. A lot of Joshua trees burns, really sad. Between the sun going down and that nice cloud. Excellent little view over here. There's kind of a little wash down in there. We'll see how hot it gets in the morning. But for now, I'm just heating up a can of Dinty Moore, some nice salty stew. And that's it. I'm just going to relax.
I woke up just before the sun. It's about 7 now. I got all the uh, heavy stuff loaded already, so I won't have to do that in the hot weather later. But I noticed the road continues. There's an extra road, and it goes up the mountain a little bit. Looks pretty easy to walk on. I think I'm going to take a little hike, check it out, and then I can uh, hang out in this shade. Probably make lunch down there. I spend most of the day here, I think. It was 78 degrees this morning, but by 7 a.m. it's already up to 81. It'll be hot up here, but it won't be deadly hot. Well, not for me anyway. Probably 105, maybe 110 up here. Last week was the record-setting deadly heat wave. I'm glad I missed that because that would have been a little bit too much on the motorcycle. So here's the road I came in on. The pavement is just out there. Boy, look at how rough it gets here. And then down there, that's all sand. It's sort of part of the Mojave Road. I think people get lost a lot because technically it's behind me a bit, but I, I could see people come through here as well. They probably get off track and have to go back up. You can see how deep this sand is. But the road continues up there. I'm go check it out. The Mojave Road is a 4x4 sand road that runs east-west through the Mojave National Preserve. And this is basically an old mining road. I already posted a more detailed version of this on YouTube. There will be a link in the description, but essentially we're going to hike up a cinder cone, which is a type of volcano. In case you've watched my other videos, the lava camp that I usually stay out is down that way. And now we are basically walking on top of that lava. It is one gigantic field of lava. It's something like 45 square miles or something. This is all lava. Oh, there's my camp and the motorcycle. Oh, it looks like it's not too far to the top, so I'm going to try and get a look inside the crater here. So the cinder cone is actually a big pile of tiny rocks, little chunks of lava that exploded out of the ground and then landed back into a pile right here. And those lava fields out there flowed out the bottom of these cinder cones. Oh yeah, that is really something else. See the wash way out there. And over the edge. Brighten it up a little so you can see what's in there. That is the top of the SEMA dome where the fire was out there. I don't see any fire, so that's good. It would be another 80 miles round trip to go over and look at it. So I think I'm just going to let it go for now. I'm sure there's pictures of all the damage online somewhere. I don't need to see it in person. Smoky and in the sun, but nothing but lava out there. Around 9 a.m. I'm reading 102 on here, but I think it's, you know, just under 100. It's probably in the sun a little. I'm going to hang out up here a little while and then head back. It's only, I don't know, a mile and a half, two miles down there. Easy walk. That's all. Another huge lava flow that just extends all the way down there. Wow, this is amazing. Oh, I'm glad I did this. What a neat hike. Pretty short. Perfect hot weather hike. Oh, a long way down. You could walk that though or slide it. I'll take one more look around and we'll head back to camp. 10.20 a.m. The motorcycle's right over there. Uh, so about two and a half hours hike, a little less. I noticed this was actually on the ground. So this is not a road. This is blocked off. This is what happens when people get lost from the Mojave Road. They're supposed to be over there and somehow they get lost and end up here. So basically they should go up there and get back on the road. And I scoped out, there's a little bit of shade in there. And there'll be more shade over here as the day goes on. So I'm basically just going to hide out in the shade until I run out of water. I've got, I think, almost two gallons between drinks and actual water. So it should last a good while. And then I will head into Baker, get more ice and stuff. And then I'll head a little bit further west and camp one more night out in the desert. But I am starting to head home, basically. There's a Joshua tree there. I think the reason we didn't see any on the hill back there is because of all the lava. I think they just can't grow on that environment because there's plenty of them up over that way out in the flats. We got a light breeze, but it is 100 at 10 a.m., which means it's going to be like 110 today. People always get nervous out in the desert. Everybody's checking on everybody. That is why you always leave a note. 
You know, somebody comes across the empty motorcycle, they might initiate search and rescue. It's not necessary. I'll be back. The fact that you leave a note alone will alert people that you are at least somewhat experienced and prepared for whatever's out there. Almost 2 p.m. Those clouds are growing. It might storm over there at some point. I don't know. Maybe it'll come over here. I think it'll be a while if it ever makes it, but the wind is sucking out over that way. Definitely low pressure out there. It was 111 or so for a pretty long time. I, it's hard to get an accurate reading out of the thermometer, but you know, close to 110 for quite a while, a couple hours, and now suddenly the clouds got just a little bigger. The wind is going that way. You know, I'm at a little bit of elevation, 3,000 feet, so it doesn't stay hot all day like it does down in Death Valley. And it's cooling off. It's, you know, 106 or so already, I'm reading. And I've got just enough shade. It's been nice. I am out of ice, though. Uh, I had plenty of water. I still have a lot of water. But um, I'm going to drink it and pour it on me, and pretty soon... It's only 18 miles back into town. It will be hotter down in Baker, but I'll be on the motorcycle moving. I already got everything packed up real early when it was cooler. One fifteen on the big thermometer down here in Baker, but I'm in the shade. I'm getting nice cold drinks and stuff. Been hanging out here a little while to let it get a little later before I go to my next camp because there is going to be no shade tonight, except for the motorcycle will provide a little shade once the sun gets a little lower. So hang out here another 10-15 minutes and get back on the road. It's almost four o'clock. All right. Since it wasn't that far, I got this soft frozen lemonade, nice and icy, sitting here in the desert eating it. 4.45, got just enough shade to sit in here. Last camp, out in the middle of nowhere. Got lots of ice and cold drinks. Just gonna hang out and enjoy the day. Head home tomorrow. Probably 10, 15 miles west, that's rain out there. You can kind of see the dividing line where the rain's falling down. It might rain where I'm at, but I don't think it'll be much if it does. It's definitely raining. Not real hard, but you can feel it. After being at 120 yesterday, 110 for most of today, and the ride over here in 115, this is very nice. It's still like 100 out here. Ah, oh, feels good. Gentle rain for about half hour or so, and it stopped. And the clouds meant it stayed a little warmer overnight, never cooled down, and I'll get up in the morning and head home. Thanks for coming along, everyone. And check out this nonsense at the end here. I tried to get a couple shots from the bike. It did not work out. And fail. All right, see you later.